Allegra, I have wonderful, wonderful news. Griffin, please share with me. Um, there's basically a new Harvest Moon game out. It's called Stardew Valley. Uh, it is like completely conquering the Steam charts right now, and I had no idea that it existed until yesterday at about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, Tell me more. I love it already. I, I know you're a fan of the of the Harvest Moon games. Really, probably any game that you can harvest, you can farm and harvest like carrots and onions and stuff in. Yes. Because you're a fan of Harvest Moon games, not that you're a fan of carrots and onions. I'm um, also a fan of carrots and onions. Oh, well, that's also good to know. Uh, Stardew Valley, like, follows the formula of Harvest Moon, which is to say farming and mining and fishing and, you know, just living a, a rural life and getting to know the inhabitants of a small town, um, romancing those inhabitants, perhaps befriending them, almost certainly. Uh, it does all that stuff. But in a package that I think is like way more digestible than the Harvest Moon games are, because I, re I really like the Harvest Moon games, but there's no denying that like parts of them are like really obtuse and uh, completely inscrutable. Um, so you haven't had a chance to play this right yet? Not yet. I've just been like digging into the fan base, which is already like super devoted to this game, which is probably why it's like on the Steam bestsellers list already. Yeah, it's like, man, it's probably going to be there for a while. So like, it's a huge game. There's so much to do, even compared to the Harvest Moon games, which give you like a lot of different activities to, to pursue. Um, there's a ton of stuff that you can do. And there's a lot of like really clever sort of modern innovations that I think are really useful here. Um, because like I said, like some of the stuff in Harvest Moon games are um, a, like a little bit unwieldy. And I feel like this game like blends in some like survival crafting stuff that you might see in like a Terraria or like any 2D crafting survival game that's also doing very well on Steam. Um, it layers some of that on there, uh, and it has like a, just a way more accessible UI and tutorial and stuff that um, makes it. I, I mean, I've I I got it like yesterday afternoon. I've probably spent like four and a half hours playing it so far. Um, it's really, really, really good. So there's here's some like Animal Crossing esque stuff where I found these geos while breaking open some rocks, and I'm gonna donate them to the museum, and that'll unlock some some bonuses that I can customize the placement of stuff in this museum. Um, you can customize the placement of like a lot of stuff more than like maybe any farming game I've ever played. Like on your farm, you can craft these different things and then put them all over your lot. And your lot is gigantic. You can upgrade your house. You can customize the interiors of your house. There's like a lot of different customization points. Oh um, man. Okay, Griffin, something I need to know is how are the guys and the girls in this game? Cause that's a there pretty are, important part. Yeah, there are five uh, women that you can suit. Is that a verb? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, there, are, there are five women and five men that you can uh, romance, um, regardless of you know whoever you want to romance. All ten are available to you. Um, I'm romancing some parsnips right now. I, I haven't really played enough of the game to like, because uh, because true to like Harvest Moon form, like it takes a while to build those relationships with people. You do have a UI to like track like how you're doing with everybody. Um, but the usual stuff of like giving gifts and having conversations with people, and then there are cutscenes that you can be a part of. Um, once you fulfill certain like friendship requirements with them is all there, but I haven't really gotten far enough into any of those relationships to like speak to like how good the characters are. Although there's like a lot of diversity in the characters. There's like the nerdy family that lives up north and then there's like there's a couple of like emo teens <laughs> which is like well, pretty I'm great. <laughs> yeah, there's a like a family that lives in a trailer. Um, there's, there's like a lot of pretty, there's a, there's like a, a caveman guy who lives in a tent up North. Um, there's, there's a lot of different, uh, characters. I just haven't gotten to know them all yet. Um, although I have collected some sea urchin, which is very exciting. Um, so like, I, I feel like I really like the Harvest Moon games, although I feel like I never get as deep into them as other people do because like, I never feel like I'm playing it right because there's too much stuff. Like, especially like the farming mechanics themselves are like really complicated. Like you have to tend to the health of a soil and you have to use fertilizer and you have to figure out how to even get fertilizer. And then there's like special machines to make better fertilizer. And then there's quality rankings for everything. They beat you over so much over the head with all that stuff. And like, I always felt like I wasn't playing it right. And I haven't felt that way with this game. Like, I feel like you may have seen a couple times now at the end of each night, it shows you like a financial breakdown of all the stuff that you've shipped and sold. Right. Um, 
stuff like that like the game really communicates with you there's also like leveling that it shows you every night like how your skills have developed how your like farmer level is developed which gives you new recipes and abilities and stat upgrades and stuff like that like stuff like that that feedback loop like makes the game like a whole lot more approachable and it makes it feel like you're constantly making progress even in like the early stages which typically in a harvest moon game is just like god i just need to go to sleep so that my turnips will grow so i can finally afford some stuff um like th this game is like really accessible right from the start oh also there's combat <laughs> also there's there's like a lot going on here though like there's a lot of content it looks like yeah and i this is so you can see this is the 11th day of, of in-game time so it's not like all this stuff is available to you. you couldn't even get into the mines um there's also quests you can see that little exclamation point which is a great 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 job of like teaching you new stuff because there are is like a whole line of tutorial quests like i am going into this mine uh, trying to complete a quest where I have to kill 10 slimes and that shows you like how to go in and there's an adventurer's guild where you can buy new like combat equipment for the mines um, it seems like pretty limited I don't think it's like it goes as deep as like a rune factory where you can develop different weapon skills although I don't know because like I haven't been mine diving that that frequently um, one other thing that the game does really good is it it um, uh, it, it like gives you these short-term goals to be working toward like constantly um, so right now I'm trying to find bronze and I'm trying to dig up clay in this mine because I want to build a silo. Once I build that silo, I can start turning the grass on my uh, farm, which is still kind of a disaster, into chicken feed. And so I can get a chicken coop and then I can start raising chickens to get eggs and then I can turn those eggs, eggs into, you know, things for recipes. And like, there's always this like sense of forward momentum, which I really, really, really dig. Right. Is there like an overarching plot, kind of like other Harvest Moon games where it's like your grandfather gives you your farm and you have yeah. to save the town? Like, is there anything like that that you're working towards? Or is so, it yeah, you, open -ended? you saw there at the beginning, I was working for a, a, a big soulless company. It's a dead end job, but I got a letter from my grandpa giving me this this farm. Um, and I think there might be, I have found something to the effect of there will be like at the end of year three, there will be a thing that happens that like like maybe might be the conclusion to the storyline. I have no idea. I'm so, so, so far away from that happening. Uh, but in this town, there is basically like a big name brand superstore, like a Walmart or something like that, um, that you can actually shop in. Uh, and it I, like it's the company that you worked at at the beginning of the game, and it feels like soulless. So you can do your shopping there, or you can go to the little general store, uh, which this, this mega shopping center is trying to put out of business. So I think that's probably like going to be one of the main sort of cruxes of the game is like saving this town from this huge like monolithic business um but it, while you're doing that you're also going to participate in the egg festival where you hunt down hidden easter eggs oh man because um, that's like my favorite part of harvest moon right like that rural charm with like the cute little town square parties so yeah, definitely there's like a, sounds like there's, there's a, a cool balance there's a real calendar where like you're finding uh you can find out people's birthdays so you can give them like special gifts on their birthdays or uh it shows you like events that are coming up like the fishing contest or the cooking contest and then uh, it adds some spice to it. Anyway, um, I, this this video is kind of scattershot showing off like uh, the huge variety of stuff that you can do in this game. But I'm really, really, really into it. Like, And it was such a surprise. Like, I know there were a lot of people who have been looking forward to this game for a while, but I some, somehow completely missed out on the fact that it was in development, and uh, which I'm actually kind of happy about because this is, like for me, like the best surprise of 2016 so far. 